Today we take a look at the installation and function of our J-Bolt gate hinges. Hey everyone, Jason from Iron Fence Shop. Today I wanted to go over the installation and functionality of our J-Bolt gate hinges. Now they come in two sizes, our larger 7-inch J-Bolt hinges for our arch driveway gates and it can support up to a 450 pound leaf. Our smaller 5.5 inch J-Bolt hinge is for our walk gates and our smaller non-arch double gates and that one will support up to 300 pounds. Both of these are well over the capacity and weight of even our heaviest leafs in both those varieties of gates. A quick note on the J-Bolt hinges is that we only sell them with our gates. We do not sell them individually because we can't guarantee that they'll work or fit properly with other gates. Let's take a look at how your J-Bolt hinge is shipped to you. The J-Bolt hinge has two pieces, the threaded J-Bolt portion where it gets its name and the backing plate. On the threaded J-Bolt section, you'll have these nuts. Your gate frame will be tightened and adjusted between these. On the backing plate, you have two holes top and bottom that your hinge hardware kit will pass through. Down in this pot portion in the grease, there's a ball bearing that the J-Bolt rides on. This will give you a smooth and easy operation of the gate. On the bottom here, you'll see a grease zerk. This will accept any common grease gun so that if your gate starts squeaking or gets harder to push, you can simply put a pump or two of grease in that and get that smooth operation back without disassembling anything. Here you can see a little mock-up of one of our 7-inch J-Bolts to show how it installs. The flat backing plate is mounted to your post. You will drill the post and then bolt the backing plate to the post with the hinge hardware kit bolts. The threaded portion goes through your gate frame. You'll drill the gate frame, pass the bolt through, and then put the nut on the end here so you can move the gate back and forth on the threads to adjust the distance between your gate frame and the posts. There will always be two J-bolt hinges per leaf, regardless of gate size. What we'll do now is take a step-by-step run-through on how you place, drill, and mount the J-bolt hinges. I'm going to install a set of our 5.5 inch J-bolt hinges on one of our Stronghold Iron traditional grade walk gates. Now this installation process will be the same for a single walk gate as it is for a two-piece double gate or one of our arch driveway gates. Now installing gates solo can be done if you're creative, but I highly suggest having an extra set of hands. It's way easier to mark, drill, and mount your hinges when you have someone else to balance and hold the gate and parts in place. Now let's go to the shop to take a closer look at how to install our J-bolt hinges. To start, let's figure out the distance we want from our gate to the ground. Normally this is two to four inches, but can be less or more depending on your specific installation. What I have here is a piece of wood under the gate to represent my desired distance from the gate frame to the ground. This will also help you figure out where you want the gate mounted height-wise in relation to your post. If you're doing a double gate with two leafs, use a longer piece of wood so that both leafs line up cleanly with each other. Once you have a rough idea of where you want your gate in relation to the post, we can move on to drilling for our hardware. Before we start marking and drilling, let's go over some helpful items to have on hand and some install tips. Since our gates and posts are black, the usual pencil or marker won't show up easily. I recommend a silver marker to mark your holes. If you don't have a silver marker, you can also place a piece of masking tape or painter's tape on the piece and use a normal pen or marker to make your mark. Once you have your drill point marked with or without tape, use a small tool called a center punch to make a small divot in the center of your desired hole. This gives your drill bit a place to bite into and keeps the drill bit from walking around and drilling off your mark. The J-bolt hinges require drilling some fairly large 3 8 5 8 and 3 quarter inch holes. I highly recommend starting with a much smaller drill bit and doing a pilot hole like this. The drilling will go much faster and easier if you start small and step up to the final size in a few different drill bit sizes rather than trying to drill one giant hole all at once that could burn out your drill bit. Make sure your hole is centered on the gate frame and post. If your drill bit does not reach through to the other side of the frame or post when it punches through, drill your full hole on one side and then measure from the top of the gate or post to the middle of the hole. Then transpose that measurement to the other side to get your drilling point. On the gate frames, it is much easier to use a longer drill bit that will allow you to drill through everything from the open side. Make sure when the drill punches through that you slow down and hold the drill level to start the new hole on the inside of the gate frame or post. You can also use a stepped drill bit like this one for the larger holes once you get your pilot holes drilled. Drill slowly and consistently. Don't just blast it at full speed the entire time as you could burn the bit out. I would also recommend stopping a few times as you drill and spray your drill bit tip with cutting oil or WD-40 as you go. That helps to lubricate the bit and keep it cooler. This will also help your drill bit last longer. The first thing we are going to do is drill the gate frame and install the J-bolt thread like this. In terms of where you want to drill for the J-bolt, there's no hard and fast rule on where to put them. The main thing you want to avoid is your J-bolt being so close to the horizontal rail that you can't spin the nut on or easily get a tool in there. 
On average, the hinges are anywhere from 6 to 18 inches in from the top and bottom. Normally, you will see the upper J-bolt below the upper horizontal rails of the gate. On this 4x4 hoop and picket iron gate, I place the upper J-bolt 9.5 inches from the top of the gate frame and the lower J-bolt 8.5 inches from the bottom of the gate frame simply because I thought they looked good there. Here's a little install trick. Now that you have your gate frame drilled for the upper and lower J-bolts and loosely attached to the frame, we need to put the J-bolt portion into the backing plate so that we can mark the holes on your post. The only problem is that the backing plate will fall off the J-bolt and that gets real old real quick as you try and hold things up. Combine the two pieces and then put a thick rubber band on like this to hold the two pieces together. You may need more than one rubber band for the bigger and heavier 7-inch J-bolt hinge. Before you lift the gate up to the post, get your trusty wood spacer for under the gate that we mentioned back when we started. Set your gate on that so you aren't trying to hold and balance the gate in the air. This is the last chance to set how high your gate will sit off the ground. Make sure that it won't impact the driveway, sidewalk, or grass behind or in front of it when the gate is fully opened. With your wood spacer between the posts and ready to go, install your J-bolt to the gate frame with your backing plate rubber banded on like this. Put the gate between your posts and set it on your wood spacer. Align the J-bolt so that it is up against and centered on the post. Since it can be hard to fit a marker between the gate frame and post, have some masking or painter's tape handy and mark the top and bottom of the backing plate as such. With the tape placed at the top and bottom of the upper and lower hinges, go ahead and take the gate down, setting it aside safely out of the way. Remove the J-bolt from the gate and place it up against the post so you can mark your two drill points. Take the J-bolt out of the backing plate and place the backing plate back up between your tape markings so you can mark your holes to drill as such. Take the backing plate down and then drill your two holes through both sides of the post. One quick install tip is to be very careful when you separate that J-bolt from the backing plate. Sometimes the ball bearing will stick to the grease on the bottom of the J-bolt and pull out of the backing plate. It's very easy for that ball bearing to pop out and go missing in action. You need that ball in the backing plate for smooth operation. Be careful it doesn't pop out on you. Once you have the backing plate holes drilled, choose two bolts, nuts, and washers from the hinge hardware kit. Go for the length that goes through your post and has at least an inch of threads that come out on the other side. A little install trick is to put some grease on the washer that goes against the back side of the post. That will allow for some slip and not allow the washer to grab and tear at the finish when you tighten things down. The backing plate will mount with the greaser pointing down as shown. Put the bolt through your hinge so that the bolt head is on the hinge side and the nut and washer are on the other side. With the backing plate mounted and both hinge kit bolts tightened, slide your J-bolt piece into the backing plate and take off one of the adjusting nuts as shown here. To make installation easier, Make sure the distance from the outside of the adjusting nut to the post is the same on the top and bottom hinges. This next part is where an extra set of hands is helpful. Take your gate, lift it up, and slide the J-bolt through the holes in the gate frame you drilled. Once the gate is on, put your other adjusting nut onto the J-bolt to sandwich the frame between them as shown here. You can put a slight film of grease on the back of the adjusting nuts as well to prevent galling or pulling of the finish off when you tighten things down. When doing a final tightening on all your hinge parts, make sure to snug them enough not to move or loosen up, but don't over tighten them to the point where they are starting to pull the walls of your gate frame and post in. You will adjust the width between your gate and post and level it out by threading the adjusting nuts on the threads and moving the gate frame back and forth. Tooling can vary slightly, but here are the general adjustment ranges for both sizes of J-bolt hinges. The larger 7-inch J-bolt hinge for our arch driveway gates will go as tight as 2 and 3 quarter inches from post to gate frame to as wide as 5 inches from post to gate frame. We recommend aiming for a 3.5 inch gap between post and gate frame. The smaller 5.5 inch J-bolt hinge for our walk and non-arch double gates will go as tight as 2 inches from post to gate frame and as wide as 3.25 inches. We recommend aiming for a 2.5 to 3 inch gap between post and gate frame. While it's tough to show in photos, you can see in this overhead shot that the J-bolt hinges will allow your gate to open wider than 90 degrees. The only thing typically stopping the gate from being able to swing in both directions is the latch. The J-bolts will allow the gate to swing inward or outward. The latch you choose will typically be what limits the gate to opening only inward or outward. You can see here the gate in operation and swinging outward. Now lastly, with the gate installed, make sure all your bolts are tightened down. If you sense some resistance when opening and closing the gate, loosen your hinge kit bolts on the post and make sure your backing plate is centered. If the backing plates are tightened down crooked, they can fight each other a little. Same goes if you leave a bolt or two loose. I hope this video gave you a good overview on how our J-Bolt hinges install and operate. Be sure to check us out at ironfenceshop.com. Want to see more videos on gate hardware? Check out this one we did on our Ornamag gate latch. Now if you have any other questions, feel free to shoot us an email at sales at ironfenceshop.com 
or give us a call at 800-261-2729. We look forward to hearing from you.